Good morning, everybody. Something good is going to happen to you. I'm leaving. We've always tried to have God's guidance because when we have his guidance and follow it, it's real guidance and wonderful things happen. One of the things he said was to build me a university, build it on my authority and on the Holy Spirit. Raise up your students to hear my voice and to go where my power is not known, where my light is dim and my voice is heard small. To go to the uttermost bounds of the earth and their work will exceed yours and in this I am pleased. Now in our tenth year, that's what we've been trying to do. And we thank God for that kind of guidance, and we trust in him. Praise his name. Today is a special day, and I believe it will suffice for the entire week. There are times, in addition to our normal and official two chapels, very rare times, of course, when we will have an extra if we feel that's God's guidance. Sometimes we will only have one chapel if we feel that's God's guidance. It has to have a reason. And we've prayed about it and felt that, that today on Monday, with God's servants here under God's special guidance, that this will be the, the only chapel we will have this week remembering that God can hold it in our hearts all week long. And it could even be more meaningful that way, this particular week. So that's our guidance, and we surrender it to him gladly. I'm so grateful and thrilled, I really don't know what to say. Uh, that. that Catherine Kuhlman would be willing to stay over after having spent so much of her life, which I believe is a great giving of seed faith, yesterday when she stood on her feet four hours on that platform, stood without sitting down. Can you imagine standing four hours, not just standing, but working, giving? No wonder her life is rich because she gives so much. And Dino, who will be presented by Richard, who has come to mean so much to me because we've known each other for, well, it, since he was a teenager, I've always loved and appreciated him. And before I present Catherine, I'd like for Richard to come and say something about his dear warm friend, Dino. Richard, would you come at this time? Thank you, Dad. In 1967, I was in a rehearsal on the first floor of the LRC of the original group, which later became the World Action Singers. They, was, they were known as the ORU Collegians. And a young man from, Julie, from the Juilliard School of Music came in and played the piano for us. He was introduced to us as Dino Carsonakis. I didn't know who he was. I'd never heard of him. And little did I have any idea that I would be standing before you this morning introducing him to you. I personally met Dino about two years ago, and we've had a warm friendship since that day. And it was a great honor for me to be here last year when he played in chapel, and his, his playing is so inspired of the Holy Spirit. It, it, you can just feel the waves coming out. And it's again my honor and my privilege. Would you welcome... Dino at the piano. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'm not sure I can pronounce my last name like you did. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I very seldom hear it anymore. It's always Dino at the piano. My last name is at the piano. You know? <laughs> It's really an honor and privilege to be here in chapel once again and to be on the same stage with two of the greatest personalities of this generation, Al Roberts and Catherine Kuhlman. They are the leaders spiritually for this day and I'm honored to be a part of this family. You know in these services I see so many people that look at others that are healed and they say, why couldn't it happen to me or some say, it shouldn't even happen to me because my, my, my uh, request is so small, my problem is so small. But there's a song that was written that says about that small little world of ours. He cares for the smallest need that you may have. Ralph Carmichael wrote this, titled, My Little World. Oh, you're kind. Thank you. 
I think I better play one more number. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, here's a chorus that uh, is very beautiful, and it's a different style entirely. And it's very worshipful, and I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit already in this place. Written by Jimmy Owens. As we place our sights on Jesus Christ, we can sing holy, holy. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dino. Those of you who are having classes will suspend them until the meetings are done. And you will go then to whatever class that you have at that hour. Fair enough? The faculty will immediately go to the mezzanine following the dismissal of this meeting where Catherine will minister to the faculty and to the administration. We will have a lunch on the mezzanine floor for the faculty. We know when we'll start this. Only the Lord knows when and where it'll end. <laughs> and to Catherine Kuhlman, this is what we say to you from the scriptures, Acts 10, 33. Thou hast done well that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Catherine Kuhlman. Thank you, thank you. We both thank you. And I want you to know that Dino is going to be back again. I was just thinking a few minutes ago while I was sitting there, I've been hanging around the university so long that if a stranger, not knowing who I was, they would think I was one of the students, they wonder what I'm going to graduate. <laughs> Do you know this? What, this is my third time, you know. It's like that. But remember, I never had the privilege that you young people are having. You're having the greatest privilege in the world, and whatever you do, take advantage of it. Every hour is important. You thrill to Nino's play. Millions thrill to his play. Dino, who is now the guest artist with some of our greatest symphonies in the United States. He's coming back again in a great concert, sponsored, I understand, by the senior class of ORU. The senior class is sponsoring. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. And he'll be back again in concert. That's just a little bit of what you heard today. That, that's just a little. Don't miss it, whatever you do. October the 5th. Now, if you have a date for October the 5th, break it. <laughs> I'm just telling you something. Don't miss Dina's concert, October the 5th. I understand it's by ticket. Now, you know what to do. You take it from there and it's sponsored by the senior class of ORU. Dino at the piano. <laughs> October the 5th. And wonderful Jesus, I pray that not one person shall see Catherine Kuhlman. Not a young person in this place today shall see Catherine Kuhlman. But I pray that not one young person shall cross the threshold of this place of worship, the same young person they were when they entered. The Holy Spirit shall move upon our waiting hearts. What I pray for them, I pray for myself. For no one in the whole world is as hungry for more than the one who's speaking this morning. 
If only the young people could know it. For just a few minutes as I bear my soul to them. I shall do something I have never done in my life before, never. And yet it's something I have to do. But through it all, may they know that the one who's speaking is crying out for more. Because there is so much more. Every atom of my being is crying out for more. So much more. It's a simple prayer, but you know my heart. I never plan too much in advance. And I'll just be very frank with you. I usually take one day at a time. I take one service at a time. If I planned in advance, I would have had a nervous breakdown a long time ago. And let's just be practical about the thing. It is just like that. I knew I had the great service yesterday, and so we were praying about that. Last night, weary in body, I'll tell you, that was one of the shortest nights I ever spent. Something happened to Tulsa time. I don't know what it was. But when I awakened this morning, I was like in the same position when I went to sleep last night. And I don't remember going to bed, you know. But when I awakened, I tell you the truth. I knew exactly what God wanted me to do. And I'm doing something I have never, never done in my life before. I tell you the truth. What I say to you, the world does not know. It is something that you don't talk about. It is something you don't tell the whole world, they wouldn't understand. God has a purpose, God has a reason for having asked me to do what I'm doing. I'm going to tell you what Catherine Kuhlman is really like. Every time Somebody gets Dino off privately. One of the first things they'll ask is, what's Miss Kuhlman really like? Wherever they get my Maggie, I don't care where we are, anywhere in the nation, they'll get Maggie off and say, now Maggie, confidentially, what is Miss Kuhlman really like? When they get Dr. Metcalf off, someplace privately, you know, probably inviting him for just a, a little luncheon or something. But they're really wanting to know just one thing, Dr. Metcalf, confidentially, what is Miss Kuhlman really like? Few people really know. My sister, my older sister, who's old enough to be my mother, said not more than three weeks ago, she looked me directly in the face and she said, you know, Catherine, I really still don't understand you. I really still don't understand you. And I often smile when those who are nearest to me will say, <laughs> that's all right, we understand you. I know Catherine Kuhlman. I know her better than anyone else in the whole world. 
And for just a very few minutes, I'm going to tell you what she's really like. You see what the world sees? It's just the glamour of it all. All of that 14,000 people really saw yesterday. All that the thousands of people really see of Catherine Kuhlman. She comes walking out on stage with a long white dress. And they see the smile. And some say she's a little too theatrical. <laughs> Somebody in the Shrine Auditorium who didn't know who my older sister was, and they were sitting directly behind her. They'd never been there before, and they said, don't you think she's a little theatrical? And my older sister turned around and she said, I want you to know, I've known her since she was born, and that's just Catherine. <laughs> and they see the glamour of everything, and they think it's wonderful. And they think it must be a thrilling life. Oh, it must be a glorious life. All you have to do is to get on a long white dress. <laughs> All on earth that you have to do is to just stand up there and smile. All you have to do is to, is to just do it. I was on a talk show the other day, Dallas, Texas, and I was being interviewed, and one of the questions was, Miss Kuhlman, what would you say to, to uh, a woman who uh, would aspire to be a woman preacher? You know what I said? I shocked the ones, it was a woman who was interviewing me, that she didn't get her breath for the rest of the telecast, I'll tell you that. I said, all right, I'll tell you what you do. Don't do it. If you've never been called, don't do it. If you've never had a real call from God, don't do it. But if you've had a real call from God, no matter what the cost is, do it. And it's just that simple. I'll tell you what Catherine Kuhlman is really like. I may disillusion you. It's more than a long white dress. It's more than just a smile on the face. It's more than coming out on the stage. I remember something that my papa said when I was very young. My papa was my idol. The most perfect man that ever lived. And I'd still face the whole world and say I had a was the most perfect man that ever lived. He was my idol. He was my love. If ever a girl worshipped her father, I worshipped my papa. I believed every word that he said. Papa couldn't be wrong. He couldn't. And I remember one day that papa came and he said, baby, and he called me baby and carried me when I was so tall my f legs dragged on the pain. He was still lugging me. He said, baby, you know, you can have anything in the world that you want. I don't care what it is. You can have anything as long as you have these two good hands. Anything. 
anything in the world that you want. You can be anything you want to be if you want it enough. I believed every word that Papa said. He said it. Papa couldn't lie. These hands, if I worked hard enough, I could get anything that I wanted. <laughs> Papa worked hard. Papa wanted money. There was a day when Joe Coleman was considered the richest man in Lafayette County. Ask anyone from Lafayette County, go to my little hometown, Concordia, Missouri. Ask anyone about Joe Kuhlman. I'm not a celebrity in Concordia, Missouri, but my father was a man who is the man they remember as one day being the richest man in Lafayette County. And he had told me, baby, you can have anything. Anything, if you work hard enough with these hands. But Papa died. without a copper cent. He had lost it all before he died. I have something I wouldn't part with for anything in the world. It's a dollar bill. It's a crisp dollar bill. I have it in a Bible. It's something very sacred to me. Something very sacred. I seldom pick it out and look at it, but there are times when I've taken it out and looked at it. That was the inheritance that I received when Papa's estate was settled. The man who was once considered the richest man in Lafayette County, in Missouri, who said, baby, you can have anything if you work hard enough. And Papa worked. Papa worked morning, noon, and night. He worked. But when he died, he had lost it all in the only inheritance that he left to the one that he loved more than life itself, his daughter. A man who one day would have given me his fortune. A man who would have given me anything and my inheritance. I've seen people who have reached the very height of fame. It was their desire, it was their purpose, it was their longing, it was everything. Oh, fame. But they forgot how thick people really are. People are so fickle. Human nature is so fickle. When they thought that Jesus was going to set up an earthly kingdom, they followed him. They wanted to be a part of that earthly kingdom. They wanted a great position. 
these opportunists that hang on and you'll find them everywhere and yet to the same people a very short time later was standing at the foot of that cross spitting upon him ridiculing him cheering him young people you have much to learn you have so much to learn. I would give anything in the world this morning if I could just give you a little of some of the things that I've gone through to help you that you won't have to go through some of these things. One thing learn and learn it well. The fickleness of human nature. They'll love you one day. They'll kiss your hand one day. And they'll spit on you the next. There's only one upon whose love you can really rely. And that's his love. And so, I considered it all. It wasn't something that just happened overnight, not really. Not really, I considered it all. The whole thing. Papa died, never having heard me preach a sermon, never once. Papa was killed instantly. It was almost as though my heart of love was buried with him. But I saw something. I saw something. one of the greatest experiences of my life when that love was transformed into a greater love and the love that one has for the master is not a human love it's something so precious so wonderful and if I were to tell you the scripture that means more to me than any other scripture in the word of God, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. That's the reason I'm telling you some things the world has never known. I don't talk about it. Keep me as the apple of thine eye. Cover me with thy wings. David expressed it one day. Keep me. Nothing else really matters, not really, not really, not really, not really. You get to the place, you know, where you have eyes for just one, where you have a mind for just one. Your purpose is fixed. You may not know what I'm talking about today. You may not know. But I pray to God he'll give you an understanding. He'll give you an understanding. It's something that's spiritual. It's something that you can't generate. You can't manufacture. It's, it's, uh, I only pray you'll understand. You live for just one. 
You breathe for just one. Just one really matters, really, just one. You live to please him. Keep me as the apple of thine eye. Keep me. There are millions out there. But I have eyes for just one. Keep me. I really love just I would lie to you if I told you I wasn't a lonely person. I would tell you an untruth if I told you that I wasn't lonely. Sometimes I feel like the loneliest person in the whole world. And yet I'm surrounded by literally thousands and thousands. They press upon you. They crowd upon you. They'll tear your clothing. We love you. We love you. I know. And that's priceless. That's wonderful. For real friends, you can count them on one hand. You can take away the thumb that word friendship and friends is so empty. Is so empty that word friend is so empty I want you to know the real Catherine Coleman, the one who lives with just one purpose. Keep me. Regardless of the price, I'm human. Don't get the idea that I'm not human. I'm more human probably than anyone else in this place today. And besides that, I'm a woman. I was a woman before I ever became a preacher. I'm a woman. I'm human. I have emotions. I feel deeply. If I didn't feel deeply, how in the world could I feel? Feel for that one who is suffering in deep distress. He has given me a love that is so priceless. I guard it as carefully as one would guard a jewel. The most expensive jewel in the world. Think of the most expensive gem in the world. And it's guarded carefully. And the thing that I guard so carefully is this.
priceless jewel that I have, my love for the masses, my love for people. But it's a supernatural love. I tell you the God's truth that I have stood before someone for whom I am to pray, knowing that I had no healing virtue, knowing that I had no power to heal that one. And there was an overpowering love for that one, where literally I have prayed silently, if it costs me my life, Please heal that one. Something I, I can't explain to you. It's something that's spiritual. It's something that's spiritual. Some of you young people may know what I'm talking about. Some may never know what I'm talking about. Some may never know. But it's something that he gives. It's a gift. Paul knew it. Paul understood it. As you read his writings, it was his priceless gift. Nothing else meant anything to him as much as this priceless something. But my love for the master keep me. It's the apple of thine eye. I seek to please no man. I seek to please no woman. I want his smile. I want his favor. I want him to fold me close to his heart. I want him to look down. And when his service is all over with, and the crowd is leaving and I go back to an empty dressing room, and I take off the long white dress, and I take my feet out of the shoes, I think of just one thing. Did I please him? Did I do my best for him? My Heavenly Father, it costs something. Everything worthwhile costs something. You see, young people, is what you want most. Let me ask as I stand before you this Monday morning, what do you want more than anything else? What in life do you want more than anything else? What is it, I ask you a direct question, what is it? And you know, you know there isn't a young person in this place but what knows the answer. You know what your goal in life is. You know at your age, you may ask a youngster in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. You may ask someone, a sophomore in high school, a freshman. They may not know. But you're at the age, every one of you young people in this place are at the age, you know as an adult what you want most in life. You know. You know what your goal is. You know. And many of you be willing to pay the price to attain that goal. You may break hearts. You may ride over people. 
no matter what it costs, ethical or unethical, you're going to get it. You're determined you're going to get it. You don't care what it does to somebody else. You don't care. You're going to get it. You've made up your mind. You're determined. But there's nothing that demands a greater price than to be the apple of his eye and to know that underneath are his everlasting arms. It means that Two wills have to be surrendered as one. That's the hardest thing in the world. That's the hardest thing in the world. For remember, he has a will, a perfect will for you. <laughs> 